The Ethereum merge is upon us. This is the long-awaited transition from Ethereum from proof of work to proof of stake. It's one of the biggest events in all of crypto's history. And in this video, I want to talk about the potential path forward where the Ethereum merge could cause Ethereum to flip Bitcoin and become the number one cryptocurrency by market cap and potentially bring back the crypto bull market that everybody's waiting for. I'm gonna talk about all that in this video as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how the Ethereum merge could cause, you know, ETH to flip Bitcoin, become the number one cryptocurrency by market cap, and potentially bring back the bull market that everybody's waiting for. So let's sort of set the stage and talk about why bull markets happen in the first place. There's all kinds of different factors. Sometimes it's adoption, sometimes it's narrative, sometimes it's hype. But sometimes it's just sheer price momentum that keeps things going forward. Basically, the price starts going up and it just keeps going up because it's a favorable backdrop that supports that. And this momentum carries the trend forward. And if Ethereum flips Bitcoin, this could be a huge catalyst that causes that momentum, that snowball that I'm talking about to really take form and roll down the hill. And so the starting line for that mega trend is essentially Ethereum overtaking Bitcoin and becoming the number one here instead of the number two. So how does that happen? Well, you know, the cryptocurrency is ranked on a website like CoinGecko.com or CoinMarketCap.com or by market caps, so basically how much are all the coins in existence worth. And if Ethereum, if all the coins become worth more than all the Bitcoins, and that's when the flippening takes place. So you can see that on a website like RatioGang.com, okay? This tracks the, uh, you know, Ethereum price to the Bitcoin price and looks at that when it can happen. And we're only, we're, we're basically halfway there. So essentially, if, if Ethereum outperforms Bitcoin in the midterm, short to midterm of, you know, 2x, then we could reach that flippening relatively soon on the grand scheme of things, okay? And so you can also see that here uh, with this, where, you know, the ratio gang is tracking the price, basically dividing the Ethereum price uh, by the Bitcoin price. This is a lot easier to visualize if you're talking about the market caps. If you take the uh, Ethereum market cap and divide it by the Bitcoin market cap, you can see this is 0 0.51, and that's a lot easier to visualize this number. All it has to do is get to one, and so we're over halfway there. And not only are we already halfway there, we're about to start making new all-time highs in terms of the Ethereum to Bitcoin ratio. And typically, when things break a new all-time high like this, we start to make new highs. And when things start, you know, making new highs, and that momentum can continue on and could, you know, close that gap of the remaining half. And the Ethereum merge very well could be the thing that helps close that gap for lots of reasons. It's got so many things behind it, like I was talking about before. There's different reasons why crypto prices go up. It could be narrative, could be adoption, could be hype. Sometimes it's momentum. If ETH merge has all those things going for it, because the Ethereum merge is one of the most significant events in all of crypto's history. You know, this is the transition from Ethereum, uh, from proof of work to proof of stake. You know, the miners are going to become replaced by validators. And now you can stake your crypto on the network in order, in order to earn a passive income reward to validate transactions on the blockchain itself. And so because of the significance, it's got a lot of hype behind it in the first place, a lot of anticipation. So we could see some price momentum from the Ethereum merge trade itself. But honestly, that's not what I'm most concerned about in the long term. What I'm most long term concerned about is actually Ethereum's fundamental changes after the merge occurs that's going to impact both the supply and the demand for Ether, the asset itself that powers the blockchain, because cryptocurrency prices are ultimately a, fu uh, a function of supply and demand. And we have some pretty big changes to both sides of this equation post-merge that could really help fuel that in addition to the hype, the narrative, and the adoption. And so let's talk about the demand side of things first, okay? So there's lots of reasons why you want to hold ETH in the first place. You, know, you can use it to pay for transaction fees. You can use it in DeFi. You can use it to buy NFTs, all that type of stuff. But now with the Ethereum merge moving to proof of stake, we have an entirely new use case for ETH. You can actually stake it natively on the network itself to earn passive income. And you might say, well, we've got lots of other cryptocurrencies that offer staking, right? So you could just go buy something else in order to stake it. Why does anybody care about ETH? Well, it actually is a pretty big deal because ETH is incredibly blue chip relative to other cryptocurrencies, okay? So that's going to attract bigger players who want to allocate larger amounts of money uh, in order to get that passive income reward. Because, you know, ultimately you're thinking about two things. You're looking at price appreciation of the asset itself that you're staking, so your principal in this case, and then also the staking rewards that get paid out on top of that, okay? So the last thing, you know, somebody with a large amount of money wants to do is buy some really brand new cryptocurrency and put it into a smart contract like a DeFi to earn some really risky yield that might dry up. That's a big problem with DeFi we've seen that the yields don't last very long because they dry up and then people just go somewhere else. So with ETH, you can hold the asset, not have to sell it because it's a pretty good bet that over the long term, this thing's going to appreciate in price. 
And then, you know, the yield is not just going to dry up and go to zero. It can decrease over time, but it's not the same type of yield that's going to completely dry up like we see in other DeFi ecosystems. And when you're staking it natively on the network, your funds are way more secure in a, in a validator setup than they would be, you know, in somebody else's smart contract that was developed. So that has the potential to attract large amounts of capital, particularly with institutions, okay? Uh, and if, if Ethereum really be, does become the open platform for finance on the internet, then it stands to reason that, you know, major financial institutions will want to allocate to this for staking natively on the network itself to help to secure it. And that could really increase the demand for ETH and affect the demand side of Ethereum or ETH the asset itself which could help push the price higher, which would, you know, help us, you know, close that remaining gap for the flipping. And so the other major reason is, you know, the supply side of things. Again, price is a function of supply and demand. Demand, lots of reasons why you want to hold ETH in the first place now. The reasons for demand are going to go up. But this the supply side of things also looks better after the merge because if you might have heard this floating around the internet, but ETH is most likely going to become deflationary over long periods of time and have a theoretical maximum supply, meaning the supply of ETH could actually go down over time. Uh, after the merge. So why is that? Well, essentially, you know, with the merge, we're moving proof of work to proof of stake and, you know, miners getting replaced by validators. And, you know, miners right now are getting paid two ways. They're getting paid with transaction fees. So whenever you send cryptocurrency around or you use a dApp, then you are paying fees, all right? Part of that fee gets burnt and erased from the network, but our other part of that fee goes to the miners. And then also new cryptocurrency, new ethers created by the blockchain itself. And then that goes to the miners as well. Now, on ETH 2.0 or after the Ethereum for the Ethereum merge, you know, the validators are going to get paid by the blockchain just like they are the miners right now. And then, you know, they're going to be getting part of the fees that we pay to use the network as well. But the amount of money that they get paid by the blockchain is going to get reduced dramatically. All right, it's going to get cut in half three times. So this is the triple halving. That's what people talk about, you know, Bitcoin's having where the Bitcoin supply gets reduced. You know, the amount of new Bitcoin hitting the, hitting the blockchain every single uh, day gets reduced by 50% every four years at the Bitcoin halving. The Ethereum triple halving is going to happen one time post-merge where the block reward is going to go down from 4% to 2%, 2% to 1%, 1% to 0.5%, hence the triple halving. This is going to result in about a 90% issuance drop. And if you factor in the fee burning, like I was talking about before, whenever new transactions are created, then you have a scenario where ETH actually becomes deflationary and it has a theoretical maximum supply post-merge, assuming that the network activity stays the same or increases. Uh, on large periods of time. So here on a website like Ultrasound Money, you can see the amount of ETH getting issued by the blockchain every year is 5.5 million Ether per year. The amount of ETH getting burnt is 2.4 million per year. Uh, since this change went live, okay, I'm looking at the all setting here, it changes on smaller time frames. But if you simulate the merge, you can see that the issuance drops significantly and it becomes minus 1.5% inflationary or 1.5% deflationary on an annualized basis. All right, so that's how the demand side of things could change. So, you know, summing all that up, you know, prices are a function of supply and demand, all right? If the demand stays the same and the, the supply decreases, then, you know, just stands to reason mathematically that the price would go up, okay? So similarly, if supply stays the same and demand increases or, you know, demand just increases faster than the supply, then that would also cause the price to go up. But in this situation, you have a scenario where, you know, the supply could be decreasing over time and the demand could be increasing and that mathematically would push the price of the cryptocurrency up. And if that starts to happen organically, where basically the Ethereum network is being used, like more people are piling in for staking, or more people are just using the network or combination of all these things, then ETH starts to, you know, decrease uh, in supply, and we start to see this organic price motion, then that could be the thing that causes a snowball to start to slowly turn over, okay? And as that starts, you know, moving faster, people chase this trend, and let's say that the Ethereum price or the Ethereum market cap actually flips Bitcoin, and that could be completely game on for a massive mega trend that causes lots of other people to enter back into the crypto space and start, you know, funneling money into other projects. Because one of the big things about, you know, a bull market is that prices can kind of be a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, well, the price is going up, so I'm going to buy more. You know, said another way, a lot of times people are going to buy after the price has already gone up. And if you start to see some more favorable backdrop for crypto and even the broader economy in the next several months, then that could be the perfect storm scenario for all this stuff to take place and actually establish a new mega trend that could carry us into a brand new bull market. Because honestly, it's not that inconceivable because at the time of recording this video, you know, if Ethereum were to rip off to twice its current valuation and Bitcoin is about to just stay the same where it is, we could see a flipping take place. You know, Ethereum has been over $3,000 for many months in the prior bull market. It's not that crazy for ETH to reach $3,000. It's been there before and we have lots of reasons to think why this could happen. 
So in final conclusion, of course, I'm not guaranteeing this is going to happen. This is not financial advice. I'm telling you to buy or sell on your cryptocurrency based on this information. I'm just taking a look at this from the actual fundamentals of the market and how the cryptocurrency itself works. But this could be something big around the corner. So that's all I've got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to master blockchain step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. Without people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.